Hey. Hey. Sandy. Well done, as usual. I could say good morning, impressionable young minds, old minds, ancient minds. No, but I don't think that would be accurate. Because you're here in this place this morning, I don't think you are impressionable minds, at least not easily impressionable minds. I think you are discerning minds. When I was younger, much, 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 much younger, I used to like to speak in front of crowds that looked at me like this. I don't like that anymore. Now I like to look out and see this. Not impressionable minds, discerning minds. The Buddha says, said, still says, do not take what I say to you as truth because I'm the one who said it. Take it, apply it, and if it works for you, then it's true. If it's not, disregard it and, and go away. Just go away. Don't be impressionable. Be discerning. So welcome, good morning, discerning, young, old, and ancient minds. I'm here to assure you that summer is coming. You may walk out this morning and say to yourself, summer's not coming. It's cold and rainy, which I like, but summer is coming. I have seen the signs, three signs. Sign number one that summer is coming, the summer thunderstorm. Recently, I heard the th summer thunderstorm, and it's one of my favorite things about living in this area of the world during summertime is we get the summer thunderstorm. It's beautiful. It reminds me of the movie, Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? The devil has these dark, hollow eyes. You're nodding. You know what I'm talking about. And the devil is standing there in Mississippi, M-I-S-S-I-S-S-I-P-P-I, Mississippi, standing there, and it's the middle of, you know, the summer, and it's all hot, and then it begins to rain, and the devil says, sweet summer rain, like God's own mercy. So that's sign number one is the summer thunderstorm. Sign number two, the women in my house are itching. <laughs> uh, my wife's a preschool teacher, so she's just gotten done with the year of preschool. So she's moving into the summer. She's itching for summer. My children have like a week left of school. My two girls, they are itching for summer. Summer doesn't change much in my life and my job, but they start to scurry about and do all these kind of summer things. So uh, sign number two that summer is coming is the girls in my house are itching. Sign number three is the most important sign. It's my favorite sign. I go out on my back porch, and you know what I see? No people, not a human in sight, isolation, just trees, ah, which is how I like it. I love people. I do. I love you all. I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to be speaking to you. People are my life. But when I go home, I don't want to see any of you again. And when I go out on my porch in the wintertime, oh, there's no leaves, so I see through the trees, and I see houses and people and children and cars and, <laughs> and all that. But during the summertime, the leaves fill in. I look behind my house, and there's not a person in sight. So summer is coming. Amen. Now, the reason for the lushness, the reason for so much of the change in our lives is because of this big ball of fire that is tilting toward us, or actually we're tilting toward it at this time of year. So much of the lushness, the, the trees that are coming out, the plants that are coming out, the life that is coming into abundance is all because it's receiving more of the sun's light. Do you know why there's life on this planet? Because of the sun. Plants. I want to say photos. You're, you're in college. Photosynthesis? Public void. What are they teaching these days? That's not my major. 
I'm not. A, I'm a history major. I don't know what photosynthesis. The, the plants turn sunlight into energy. Those plants create oxygen. We breathe the oxygen. We feed on the plants. We feed on the animals that feed on the plants. The reason we have life on this planet is because of the sun. And the more light we get, the more energy we get, the more life there is. So this time of year, we're tilting toward the sun, and we're receiving so much of its energy so much it makes us want to go inside to the air conditioning and take a nap that's how much of the sun's energy everything in this universe everything in our reality is a manifestation of energy when god creates in the beginning when god creates a uh, in kabbalah it's called ein sof god is called ein sof the endless one and when the endless one creates it breaks open witnesses itself and what it witnesses is the ohm the vibration and that vibration in our reality is energy it's the first form energy we are all even you sandy even poor old sandy even poor old Sandy, we are all manifestations of energy. We receive energy, and then what do we do with that energy? We give it. We receive light, and then what do we do with that light? We give it. We give light. We create things. We create thoughts. I'm creating thoughts right now. I'm wondering, this is, how is this going? I'm, cre I'm, I'm creating words right now, and I'm creating actions right now. And that's how I give energy. That's how I give light. And most of our choices, if not all of our choices, have to do with where do I want to shine this light? We wake up in the morning, sometimes at 5.30, sometimes at 11.30. You're late for class. You're late for class again. We wake up in the morning and we have a choice to make. How do I want to shine my light today? What do I want to give my energy to? What do I want to create? When you think of thought, you are creating a thought. You are giving energy to a thought, and you are creating it. You are pointing energy in that direction, and bam, you've created a thought. When that thought becomes a word, that word is a vibration of sound, which is a vibration of energy. I am changing the energy in this room right now, and the thoughts – that become words, that become your ideas, yes, I'm influencing you, discerning minds, are also expressions of energy. When I hit this, when I hug you, you're going to get a hug later. You, you're going to get a hug later, too. Just You're going to get a hug later. When I hug you, I'm giving energy. If I push you, I'm giving a different kind of energy. So we want to decide, how am I going to express this energy? Because we are walking. Have you ever spit into the wind? Is it spit or spit? Spat. Have you ever spat into the wind? When you spat into the wind, what happens? It comes back at you. When you spit into the wind, you walk into that which you created. <laughs> so you have to decide how you won't spit. In the Hindu traditions, it's called samsara. Samsara is the cycle of lives, and it's all based on karma. What is karma? energy every action every thought every word every deed bears a fruit and that fruit is the world you're walking into you're quite literally walking into the world you created every thought creates something every word creates something every action creates something and yet you just you have to live with it have to live in it and you're not the only one everyone around you is doing the same thing samsara the cycle of lives now the Hindu traditions also talk about the cycle beyond life and death, but in the Upanishads, they say this cycle is happening every moment of every day. Think, word, deed, create, die, live. Think, word, deed, create, die, live. This moment's dying right now. This next moment's being born right now. And you're walking into the world which you created. And we can spend so much of our lives. In fact, we could spend a lifetime figuring out how to create the best thoughts, how to create the best words, how to walk into the best reality. A lot of wisdom out there, a lot of wisdom teaching you, okay, how can I think thoughts that serve me the most, that serve others the most? How can I speak words that serve me the most, that serve others the most? How can I act in a way that serves me the most, that serves others the most? It's a constant cycle of learning. We are constantly learning from our actions, dissecting our actions. We are analysts, analyzing our lives. And you can spend your entire life doing that. 
and that would be fine. Let me see where this is going. Let me see the ship. Let me kind of okay. That'd be fine. That is a life worth living. And most of us are trying our best to do that. How can I act in the best way? How can I think in the best way? How can I speak in the best way? But the mystics from these traditions say something else. They say, yes, think good thoughts. Yes, speak positive words. Yes, act in a way that makes this world the best place it's going to be. That's not going to bring you peace. That's not going to bring you joy. And that's not going to bring you love. And that's not going to bring you fulfillment. There is no thought that is perfect. There is no word that is perfect. There is no action that is perfect. Important, yes, to cultivate energy. Important, yes, to express energy. Important, yes, to create positive things. But... There's no peace there. One of my favorite texts, the Bhagavad Gita, stars, starring, dun, 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 Krishna, the incarnation of God. And Krishna says, hey, bro, it's actually in Sanskrit, hey, bro, hey, bro, the cycle of samsara has you, and you can act in the highest manner possible. You can act with wisdom, with wisdom wisdom, but you're still going to be bound by those actions. You're still going to be caught in the cycle. Or you can focus on me and let go of all that shit, and then you will find peace. There's words for it in every tradition. The kingdom of heaven, nibbana or nirvana, moksha, satori, samadhi, release from the cycle. The light is constantly shining. Your light is constantly shining. But you want to find some peace? You got to let it get dark. You got to stop acting just for a second. You act, you act, you act, you act, you act. You think, you think, you think, you think, you think. I know I do. I think, I think, I think, I think, I think. I'm going to figure this out. I'm going to figure this out. I'm going to figure this life out. I'm going to get there. I'm going to get there. Finally, I'm going to get there. I'm going to get there. I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to find peace, 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 peace. And I'm going crazy. Stop the thinking. Stop the speaking. Stop the acting. Just stop the shining. And let it get dark. The earth knows. The earth turns. Why does the earth turn? Because it needs sunlight. Why does the earth turn? Because it needs darkness. It needs light and it needs dark. It needs light and it needs dark. It needs light and it needs dark. When you stop, when you stop and it get dark, <laughs> it get dark. When you stop and it gets dark, you realize something. I'm going to tell you. You got to be patient. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you. Just be patient. I'm going to tell you what to do. I'm hungry. Feed me. When it gets dark, you realize the sun comes from a place. The actions come from a place. The energy comes from a place. When Ein Sof divides and moves, it creates energy. It creates energy. What? It creates energy. What? It creates energy. creates energy. It moves. It vibrates. The peace, the love, and the joy is in the it. When you sink down into the darkness, when you sink down into the void, when you sink down into that place where all light comes from, you settle into a peace that just is, a love that just is, a joy that just is. And then the world turns, you act, and you realize it's not about what you create. It's about who creates. It's not about what you think. It's about who is thinking. It's not about what you say. It's about who is speaking. It's not about what you do. It's about who is doing the doing. Why are you here? What's the point of all this? Why are you here in this life? Why were you born? Why do you exist to be? 
and you are. You've already found it. You never lost it. That thing you're looking for is sitting right there waiting for you to get quiet and realize it and act from that place. And then, ooh, then you just create. And all the light's that much more beautiful. You know what happens when it gets dark? Stars. Everywhere stars. Hold on a minute. I'm not the only light here. Every single other person around me is also a light. Shining, creating, thinking, speaking, doing. And all these lights are the same light. And we all come from the same place. And we're all returning to the same place. Yes. That's the secret. That's what all the mystics have been telling you this whole time. That you are not lost. That you are found. That the kingdom of heaven is on the earth and men do not see it. Women do not see it. They do not see it. That release yourself from the cycle. Moksha means release. Release yourself from the constant cycle of trying to create something perfect. And just sit and create. And sit and create. And sit and create. Nibbana, nirvana means blowing out the candle of desire. What is the desire? The desire is to create something perfect. The desire is to create something specific. Oh, I got to create this life for myself. Or just create. Just be. Just go out there and be your beautiful self. Hmm. What do I want you to do? What do I want you to do? I want you to spend some time in quiet. Every single day. Usually I say, you know, do what you want to do. But I'm not saying that today. Today I'd like for you to spend some time in quiet every single day. And what does quiet mean? Quiet means stop acting. Stop thinking. Stop speaking. Stop doing. Just for a moment. You're resisting. Stop. Just for a moment. Let all the light come back. Sit in the silence and feel the presence. Just feel it. Just feel it. That thing that everyone is looking for by going out instead of stopping and going in. Feel the presence of peace, love, and joy. See the stars. See that every squirrel, every acorn, every tree, every person you disagree with, <laughs> every person you want to in traffic are all just lights shining, coming from the exact same place. I want you to create something beautiful. I do. I do. I want you to have good thoughts, positive thoughts. I want you to have good words, positive words. I want you to have good actions, positive actions, not just for yourself, but for all of us. We need you. We need you in this world. But I also want you to find peace. And there's no action, thought, word, or deed that's going to bring you peace. Because you already got it. You never lost it. You never lost it. It's right there. Let's pray together for a moment. <sighs> after thoughts like that, after words like that, words don't seem enough. Or words seem too much, maybe. We spend our time looking for you, looking for me, I am. But where'd you go? I mean, you never left. You never left. You've been here the whole time, reaching your hand out. I think the word is grace, offering yourself, saying, here, here I am. Just stop for a moment. So I suppose my prayer today is a prayer of allowing a prayer of being, a prayer of thinking from a place, of speaking from a place, of acting from a place, and knowing that place is my place, is our place, where everything comes and everything goes in the cycle. So help me to trust. There's a good word. Help me to find faith that I am everything I need to be already. I was born into it. 
that you are everything you need to be already. You were born into it. Help me to take it one moment at a time, knowing this, this is the only moment there is, and bring us all peace. Help us all find peace. Help us all know peace. Help us all be peace. And then, and only then, help us shine. For all these things, and for the silence between all these things, I say thank you and amen. Amen. Thank you for listening. I appreciate it. You can be quiet if you want. You don't have to clap.